Here are some notes on the pathophysiology of preeclampsia. The pathophysiology involves initial endothelial dysfunction and vasoactive mediator imbalance that leads to widespread systemic effects. The primary vascular changes are endothelial cell activation, which leads to reduced nitric oxide production and global vascular hyperreactivity. You then have vasoactive mediator imbalance. You have an increase in thromboxane A2 and a decrease in prostaglandin I2, or prostacyclin. This leads to a primary vasoconstricted state. Now, when you have vasoconstriction, you have systemic effects throughout the body. In the vascular system, of course, vasoconstriction leads to high systemic vascular resistance, which can lead to intravascular volume depletion. If all of your vessels are clamped down, they will have a smaller volume and you'll have volume depletion. In the uterus, you'll have myometrial vasoconstriction, which can lead to decreased uterine blood flow and decreased placental perfusion. In the kidneys, vasoconstriction leads to decreased renal blood flow and decreased urine output. In the lungs, you can have capillary leakage and increased inflammatory response, which leads to pulmonary edema. Other changes in the blood, the blood becomes hypercoagulable, you'll have platelet activation, decreased platelet counts, prolonged PTT, which can lead to a coagulopathy.